Hey everybody, Jason from Alvatone Audio back again. And uh, yesterday, I had this board on display at my table. I was a vendor at the Indiana Guitar Show. Had a great day, uh, saw a lot of cool guitars, a lot of cool gear, and uh, most importantly, I had a lot of really cool uh, conversations with a lot of players out there. And there are two main things I was talking about. One, I was talking to a lot of players about the benefits of using a switching system, something like this, where I have a, a Boss ES5 on this board. You know, when you explain to someone, it's like, well, look, you know, with one button, you can take, uh, you can turn two pedals on, you can turn two other pedals off, you can switch channels on your amp, and you can set a program change to your MIDI control device. You can kind of see their eyes light up a little bit, and the you know, gears start to turn a little, and uh, they start thinking about ways they can improve their own rig. So had a lot of good demos, lots of good conversation around that. Second thing I was talking to people about is all this I.O. on the back, and these are custom panels that I make. And you can see here, here we've got send and return for your effects loop on your amp. We've got in and out, which is in and out to the board. We have a control, which is for amp switching or uh, turn your reverb on and off, whatever you want to do. Uh, a MIDI, and we also have an electric power con and a little power switch, just for fun. So how many cables do you actually have to run to get all this stuff plugged into your amp or get plugged into your back line? Well, the answer is just one. And that's what I want to talk about today. So let's go over to the bench and take a look at a couple cable products. Okay, so here we have the cable that I built to go with the board, and I have a plug to go in every jack on the back panel. And what this particular cable is, is this is um, from btpa.com. This is their CA1003 multi-channel uh, snake cable. And this stuff is great for performance rigs, pedal boards, all that kind of stuff. So total of seven different cables inside the snake, what you get First of all, you get four standard channels of an unbalanced audio, uh, according to their specifications, 24 gauge, oxygen free, pretty low capacitance is only 20 picofarads per foot. Um, and they're color coded. You get a red, blue, purple, and a black. Um, a little hard to see because I have the TechFlex on here. Probably don't need TechFlex on this. It, for me, it's just like a habit on all this kind of like a multi-core snake cable. I always put TechFlex on there just for like a little bit of added protection. Um, but this stuff is actually pretty rigid. Um, it's it's pretty heavy duty. I wouldn't expect it to fail on you anytime soon. Uh, really good quality on that. So you get uh, four channels of that, which is perfect for like an in and out, plus also like a send and return and an FX loop, uh, stereo in, stereo out. I mean, obviously you can configure this stuff however you want, but four channels is plenty. Um, the next one is actually a star quad, so four conductor cable in there, uh, and I have it wired up just as a TRS uh, for amp control, or like channel switching, turn your reverb on and off, that kind of thing. Uh, but you could use T TRS, you could put an XLR in there, and because of star quad, so four conductors plus the ground, you could even use this for MIDI. I happen to use this last one for MIDI, but this is actually an eight conductor. So any kind of five, six, seven, eight pin DIN connectors you would have, uh, you could use this last channel for. Again, I just have standard five pin MIDI here. You can just clip the, the extra conductors you don't use or better yet, even just run them down to ground. And you also get AC power, which I just happen to have terminated with this uh, Nordic PowerCom. So really nice cable, really flexible. If you need all the connections, you want the MIDI, you want the, the control, uh, all the audio feeds, uh, this is a really great option. This is, happens to be the pedal board end. Uh, like I said, with the PowerCom, I just have the standard Edison plug down here on this end uh, with straight jacks. But of course, you can build this stuff out however you want to. And the second one I have here, this is a Gepco product. Uh, this is their One Run series, and this is model PA2, two meaning the actual number of channels of audio that you get. It's very similar in that you get one run of AC, uh, which I just have terminated here as an Edison and IEC, but, but again, you can terminate this however you want. And again, PA2 for the two channels of audio that you get. And they make this in two, eight, and 12 channels. I really wish they would make a four channel. I have no idea why they saw fit to skip four channels, but whatever, that's what it is. So very similar to the BTPA product, except for there's two, a couple designations here that I, I kind of lean towards this a little bit if you don't need the, the, the star quad and the MIDI and, and that kind of stuff. One, this is actually 110 ohm rated for digital audio. So they, one of the use cases they say you can use for this is additional to just running like AES digital audio, you could always use uh, DMX lighting control over these cables as well because it's rated for that. The other thing about these is these are actually two conductor, which means you can run balanced audio down these. So uh, you could run, of course, 
just standard unbalanced audio. You could run balanced audio. You could run digital audio. You could run some other kind of control signal, um, like the amp switching or whatsoever, just depending on how you put the termination. So you get a little, even though this is a, a one generic type of audio channel, they are pretty flexible. And the other thing I like about it is that um, whenever I show these to people, I get comments uh, a lot that say, well, I heard you're not supposed to run your power that close to your audio. And in some cases, you can definitely get into trouble if your audio and your power get too close together. But considering the amount of amperage is gonna be running down these cables, especially for something just like a pedal board, it's nothing you really need to worry about. Now, both the BTA cable and this Gepco cable, they actually have the foil shield on the audio. Now, when I did a video a couple weeks back and I talked about the console cable, and one of the advantages to those are that they have the foil shields instead of the spiral or the braid, and they're great for coverage, and they block a lot of different kind of uh, contamination that a standard spiral or braided shield won't. But the thing along with those is, Along, because you can't really terminate that foil shield because it's too fragile, you get a drain wire that comes with it. So you just have a, a very thin wire that runs along the length of the cable and that's what you actually go and terminate to on the, the whatever plug you're, or jack you put it on. Now, this actually has a drain wire to go along with it, whereas the BTA cable did not. So if you were in some kind of situation where you really want to make sure that you're running as cleanly as possible and you didn't want any kind of contamination from your power, there's a slight edge in here because it does have the drain wire and that's something you just terminate down to the ground pin here on the power. So regardless, uh, I think they're both great products. Uh, the BTPA is very flexible in case you need to run a lot of different types of signals down your snake. And again, not just for your pedal board, any kind of uh, performance rig you may have. Uh, and again, this Gepco product is great. Uh, just, I think it's slightly different market. Um, if you're looking for like remote recording rigs, uh, uh, multimedia type stuff, maybe a, a multimedia installations, then the additional flexibility of the audio connectors on this could really be beneficial to you. And of course, it's always nice to just take a whole bunch of different uh, cables and just wrap them all up in one big outer outer shield. This stuff is super rugged, just like on the BTPA. Uh, just like your, your big audio snakes you're probably used to looking at, this is not fragile at all. So this is definitely meant for stage use. So this uh, any one of these is gonna last you a long time. And again, I'll put the TechFlex on here, but the outer insulation on these audio conductors, it's, it's very thick. I wouldn't expect it to wear out anytime soon. Again, it's just one of the things I do. I, I like the TechFlex on the snake stuff. Anyway, uh, if you're looking to clean up your pedal board, your performance rig, any of that kind of stuff, definitely take a look at these two products. I'm going to have all the links down in the description. By all means, go check it out. I uh, hope this was helpful, and I will see you next time.